Now, earlier this week, we told you how the city of Cleveland is tearing down a block of homes near the Cleveland Clinic deemed the worst of the worst. It's to make way for new development. Now, the city unveiled an exhaustive look at its nearly 170,000 properties, grading them from A all the way down to F. News 5's Clay Lapart has been following through on this story all week, and tonight he breaks down what it all means and what city leaders plan to do with it. Between removing the bullet holes and replacing the broken glass, Pastor Wilson has a long to-do list before he can open Jesus Christ Church in Cleveland's Huff neighborhood. But every two weeks, he makes sure to mow the grass. A small step that he says makes a big difference when you compare it to the other buildings in the neighborhood. This ain't gonna never look like that. No. Not no. on your watch. No, no, not on my watch, you won't. You see, that building across the street just earned an F rating from Cleveland's housing department. Yeah, typical vacant lot. But... Earlier this year, News 5 went door to door with inspectors for part of their 1,400 mile journey weaving across the city, examining home after home, building after building, looking at the details and grading them from A to F. Much of the survey confirmed what many already suspected like how the 7% of out-of-state owned properties are less likely to invest in Cleveland, earning more C, D, and F grades than local owners. I think we all assumed that the out-of-state um, properties would have a lower grade, uh, but being able to justify that assumption with real data uh, I think is very powerful. Other takeaways include how half of all vacant buildings in the city were given a D or an F, well, 94% of all occupied buildings received an A to C. The good news, the study shows the number of vacant buildings dropped from 8% in 2015 to around 6% today. As a result, there are more vacant lots than ever before, making up 20% of the city. Now, city leaders say this data will help guide them to the worst of the worst and what needs to be done. We don't believe residents should have to call when there's a bad house on their street. We should be on top of it. At the end of the day, this data means nothing unless it directly benefits the residents and businesses within our city. City leaders say they have set aside 21 million ARPA dollars to remove blighted homes and hope to acquire more grant money to make way for what's next. In Pastor Wilson's case, his church earned a D from the city, but with each passing mo. Perhaps his D stands for determined, repairing a vacant century-old neighborhood church and not letting it end up on the city's chopping block as he waits for more funding to fully reopen. Trying to keep it, keep it presentable, you know, trying to keep it up. We want to make sure we can preserve what we can preserve and revitalize what we can revitalize. And those properties that are D or F, we have to uh, demolish those properties, making sure we have a strategy as a city to turn those vacant lots into productive assets uh, for the city of Cleveland. In Cleveland, Clay Lepard, News 5. Now that survey also shed light on lead contaminated properties in the city. State law requires a home with lead contamination be marked as unsafe for human occupancy. That survey says that happens when owners don't try to resolve the hazards after repeated warnings. 370 placards have been issued. Surveyors saw 336 of them and said they suspect people live in 75% of the properties with a placard. 